Well, thank Frontier and, and John for allowing me along again to, to speak in front of you all. Um, I've done this a few times for John and I'm kind of running out of uh, ideas really. But uh, so some of you have been here before, you'll, have, you'll notice that some of the presentation is you've maybe seen before. But as David highlighted, uh, the importance of organic matter, I can't stress too much. I think that's a big, big problem that we've had over the last 50 years is the, is the loss of it. Uh, which one? So this was just a brief uh, introduction, just uh, very quickly on the horse company, a uh, bit, bit about the soil. I don't want to cover what David's already covered, but we need to, we're singing off the same hymn sheet, I think, organic matter and the effects that tillage has on, uh, on, uh, on the soil. Just briefly, Horsch was only started in 1984, so a very young company. That's the headquarters at the top, the, far, the farm where it started on the left there. Uh, that's where Michael Horsch started building machines back in the early 80s. And then there's a new factory at the bottom there, that's in northern Germany, in the old eastern Germany. That's where the main production, production is. Four really ranges of machinery, we've got tillage, uh, seeding, spraying, and we do a few chaser bins as well. Uh, we do a complete tillage range apart from a plough. Michael Horsch has vowed he'll never make a plough, which I suppose is against his ethos, really, uh, because on their farms, they've never, they've never ploughed since the early 60s. It was largely due to very shallow, stony soil, and then as time went on, they saw the benefits of, 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 of non-inversion tillage. So they've focused on that type of machinery ever since then. And that's the kind of growth of the company in the last few years. So they'd be as big as Lemkin now. Uh, Lemkin would start in the late 1780. Uh, would be a lot bigger than Vadastat now, whereas you know years ago Vadastat were at the top and we were coming up to them. So we've we've progressed very well in the last few years. So long long may it, may it continue. So these are some questions that John put on an email a couple of days ago. So I think as we go through the presentation, hopefully we'll answer most of those as as we go along. So the soil, um, it's often said that a handful of soil has more living organisms than a number of people on the planet. So it, I think we all forget sometimes how much life there is below our feet. There's a lot more life underneath the ground than there is above it. So when you're hacking about with cultivators and, and tillage equipment in wet conditions, I think it's important to, to consider what, 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 you're, what you're doing to the soil. And one gram of soil contains up to a billion bacteria. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of life there. In one acre, you can have up to a million earthworms if, if the, you know, in the right conditions. So all this life in your soil must be preserved. And I don't want to go over too much again because John's covered it uh, very well. Uh, sorry, David's covered it very well in the previous presentation. You can see mine's not just as scientific as, as David's, just being a simple machinery salesman. But some of these points here, it, it, as David stressed, it, it enhances carrying capacity and tillage. So the more organic you've got, you can work with bigger tractors, maybe in wetter conditions without damaging the soil. Uh, it, it improves water infiltration. So the, you know, after all this wet weather that we've had, the increase in organic matter allows the water to drain away more quickly. It's also got more carrying capacity of water. So it sustains dry conditions better as well. So the University of Sheffield research estimates that the average UK soils only have 100 harvests left if we carry on tilling the way we're doing in many parts of the country, which is a frightening statistic. Uh, around 18% of organic matter in the UK and Ireland arable topsoils have been lost between 1980 and 1995. So a very, very short period. And in a trial in Denmark um, over 18 years, they found that the, the uh, straw we incorporated had 18% more organic matter than, the, than burnt, or if it was taken off and baled, obviously. And that is the problem in the eastern UK, is you've got this east-west split now. It's not all about tillage, the loss of organic matter. It's about the east-west split in the country. You've got a lot of cattle and stock on the west side of the country, and very few on the east side. So it's, it's, it's an unfair balance. You know, you're moving a lot of straw to the west and you're not getting the dung back. But in tillage, ploughing causes the fastest decline in organic matter. And you'll see in a slide in a minute. So it, it points to a looming crisis unless we change our systems. You can see there the plough 
That must have been in, in America, because they're talking about acres and pounds. Um, but you see, you're, you're, you're losing a lot of organic matter in the first 19 days. Uh, a ton and a half per acre in the first 19 days, you're losing by you know, carbon going up in the air, even compared with deep, deep tines. So you can get rid of your compaction with a deep tine, you're still going as deep as maybe with a plow, but you're not losing nearly the same amount of organic matter. And then if you obviously go to direct drilling, you're losing as, as the minimum amount. So this is, um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know who actually did this study here, but this is the uh, cultivation practices in, in UK and Ireland. So it'd be interesting to know within the audience here, how many do all strip till? Is anybody here does the whole farm? There's one. So that could be rounded. So you've got on the right hand side there, they're doing, there's 3% of the country, does, that's all they do, strip till. Now how many here does, does um, direct drilling? All, the whole farm direct drilling. So it's three that do all direct drilling, four. Right. And min, minimal till, non-inversion, the whole farm. So it's one. And then how many plough? Plow everything. One. So you're, you're better than the average. <laughs> but you can see most of you are in this 60% bracket. You're doing, a, you're doing a bit of plowing maybe, a bit of direct drilling, a bit of uh, non-inversion tillage. And I think the aim is, yeah, to go less tillage the better. But it's, as you know, if you've done it, it's not, it's not easy. But this is the effect of, of, of tillage on the land. You can see this is the same field, just right side by side. On the left, you've got a ploughed and pressed land, and on the right, it's one pass with a tine disc cultivator. And you can see the, 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 you've got a far more acceptable seed bed, really, on the, on the right there. But this is a, this is a big problem. Is the, um, you know, I still get people saying, well, we've got a lot of dung and we've got a lot of or organic matter we need to plough down. And uh, you, so I asked them, I said, where is your fence post rot? Does your fence post rot at six inches or does it rot on the surface? And they all say, well, it rots on the surface. So you've got to ask yourself, why are you burying the trash? You know, because it, it, what happens is it sucks all the oxygen out of the soil at this depth, at six, eight inches, and then um, the bacteria die because they need oxygen, and then it just lies there. You can see an anaerobic layer, and the roots grow down to that, and they don't like it. So you need to keep the, 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 your straw and chopped straw on the top and it'll break down far quick, and it also feeds the, feeds the worm, worm activity as well. You see on the soil on the right, that hasn't been ploughed for 10 years, higher in carbon, darker soil, more friable, more worm ways in it, a far more alive soil. And that's the, it, I don't even notice that the factory it, it, over in Germany, we've got trial plots there that they've had for 30 years, and this is just different tillage um, systems they use on, on, on those plots to see the, the effects of the soil. And you see on the left, you've got the plow. Again, lighter soil, loss of carbon, compared with the soil on the right. And they've both been cultivated to the same depth. The soil on the right has been cultivated down to 25 centimeters. Whereas on the left with the plow, you've got the straw concentrated into layers, and you've got a pan at, at the bottom. Um, it looks nicer on the top, it looks cleaner. So you pass by the car, you look over, you say, well, that plow bit's a far better you know, tillage system because it's cleaner on the surface. But when you look under, under the surface and you see what's happening, you can see the difference. Erosion is also a big issue. You know, here locally in the UK, that's up in East Lothian. They say it's costing the UK government 50 million pounds a year, but I've seen figures that's far, far greater than that. And approximately 10 million hectares of crop, crop land is abandoned worldwide every year due to erosion and, and loss of organic matter. But how long can that continue for before we all get fairly hungry? That's just a field that locally at home, good farmer, very good farmer, but you can see he's over cultivating the land and that, that soil runs out the gate onto the road. But you see since 1850, Britain has lost 84% of fertile topsoil with erosion. And that's continuing at a rate between one and three centimeters per year. So you're losing a lot of, a lot of soil blowing out the field or washed out the field, and that's got to stop. This was just a, a, an observation Horsch made on these trials at, at the factory on the effects that tillage has on worm population. So each jam jar is a different plot. The top row is the ploughed plots, the, the middle one is tilled at 20 centimetres, and the bottom one at 10 centimetres. So you've got ploughing, deep tillage, shallow tillage. And you can see the number of worms here. Uh, 
press the right button a bit. Yeah. The top one, you see the number of worms there compared with the bottom. So a vast difference in, in worm numbers just purely by the, the effect of tillage. And you, you've got to remember that the worms are a surface feeder. And you'll often see leaves at your back door, then a big lump in a clump. And a lot of people think, well, it's been a wet night, the rain's washed all the leaves together. It's not the water that does it, it's the worms. And the worms, you can see there, they've, they've clumped the, the, the straw into clumps. And if you take that straw away, and you see on the right-hand side, you'll get a wormhole. You'll always get a wormhole under a clump of straw like that. You walk across these stubble fields here, and you see the straw in lumps, it's the worms that's done it. So that's another reason for not plowing. If you plow that down, you're destroying the, the, the food source. You also destroy their habitat there. You see on the left-hand side, that's a wormhole, and they, they tend to move up and down the same wormhole. And they can go down six feet. Because, see, I still get farmers at home saying, well, we need to plough to get rid of this water. But they're only ploughing, say, six, eight inches. Where does the water go after that? They can't. Where a worm will go right down to six, inch, uh, six feet and, to, and, and, and drain your field. But the other interesting thing about the, the worm activity, if you say, if you had a, a, a million worms an acre, and they can each produce around about four kilograms of worm cast a year, that worm cast is five times richer in nitrogen, seven times richer in phosphate, and 11 times richer in potash. So those worms are not only giving you drainage and aeration in the soil, they're also giving you nutrients. And you can go down the east side of England these days when they go ploughing, and there's not a seagull in the field. There's not a worm left. Now that's very difficult to sustain. This is the effect of, of drainage, as we've mentioned before. Field on the left, plough. And th those fields are only 200 yards apart. Now, that's an interesting statistic. Now, whether that's true, I don't know, but I've been told this. Um, if you've got a four-inch water pipe every square metre of your field, vertical water pipe, the worm activity is equivalent to that in drainage. So be, you'd have no flooding in your fields if you had that scenario. Now, we're talking about going towards direct drilling, and some farmers are trying to go direct drilling from a plough-based system, which is virtually impossible. Your soil won't be in the right condition, right uh, structure and so on, and also your field won't be level. Now, you'll get people saying, well, I've got a power harrow, I can level fields. That guy there's got a power harrow, and he's a good farmer. But look, every time your tractor goes in a field, after a plough system, you'll get wheel marks, you've got your finishes on the headland, you will not get a level field. But in a, in a reduced tillage system, you're always levelling. And in a level field, everything's more efficient. Your baler, your combine, your sprayer, everything. Your drill, you know, even if a contour following coulter uh, tries to maintain its depth, as it drops into the bottom of the hollow, the pressure on the coulter gets less. It has to. So even a contour following coulter is difficult to maintain an even sowing depth if the field's not level. And a time cultivator is the best tool to level fields because it moves, it's like a big plane across the field. It's moving soil about a metre forward. So horse do that direct drills. We've got about eight different drills in our range now. Um, these four here are suitable for direct drilling, although the one on the left is more of a strip-till drill. Um, note they're all grain and fertiliser, because I think if you are thinking about going to um, direct drilling, you know, putting a dose of fertiliser, phosphate, nitrogen down the spout with the, with the grain is a, is, is a big advantage. Um, three of these are disc drills. The one on the top left is a time drill, and it's fairly popular in the UK, that time drill, and it's a very universal tool, and I think for our type of conditions, wetter conditions, it's more suitable for direct drilling than a, than a disc drill. Uh, a disc drill originally would, be, would come from the United States, designed for conserving moisture. Well, generally in the UK, we don't need to do that. Um, so the time drill tends to, it, it does a little micro-cultivating down the, the seed row, and it seems to be more um, flexible and adaptable. The other beauty of a time drill is you can put different points on it to suit your different requirements. Because a disc is a disc, you can't, you can't do anything with a disc, but that's it. With a time, you can put all sorts of different points on for fertilizer, for band sowing, for narrow sowing, for direct drilling, so you've got far more flexibility here. Now, the Duet Coulter there, that's the standard coulter on a horse sprinter drill. We're now getting a lot of customers that are going to the, either the Borgo, uh, the Dutch opener, or the, uh, the Metcalf, which is more local. But they're all giving you this ability to change the point on the, on the, on the front of the, the, the tine to give you different um, cultivation, row widths, and so on. 
So, and it also hasn't got this deep point on the duet coulter on the left there. You can see the leading point is a lot, is a lot deeper and the heavy soil tends to bring up too much, too much raw, raw, raw soil. So, that, so you can see it's very, very easy to change the points just by a hollow pin or whatever on, on all these systems. So a very adaptable system, less horsepower as well with this, with this type of, of, of foot. And these are some direct drill plots. That one, not plots, land, that's on a coal stream that was taken just a few weeks ago. Direct drilled winter wheat with a sprinter. That's a direct drilled uh, winter wheat in Northumberland. So you can see, once your fields are level, that drill works very, very well. And the beauty of a tine drill compared with a disc drill, if you've got a lot of trash, the tine will sweep the trash out of the way, place the seed onto clean soil, and then the trash goes back on top of it. Because if you think how a plant naturally rejuvenates, a plant in the roadside, the plant grows, the seed ripens, the seed drops onto the ground, and then the straw the, lands on top of it. That's how it naturally rejuvenates. So it's difficult with a, a disc drill. If there's too much trash, you can get the disc pushing the, 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 the straw into a slot and then placing the seed on top of it. So you don't get as good a seed to soil contact as you do with a tine drill. So I think we've maybe answered most of these questions, have we, John? So just to summarize, um, the less you do to the land, the better. Your energy costs come down, your soil damage is less, erosion is less, leaching of most nutrients and agrochemical is less. Your work rate improves, decom decomposition of residue imp improves, biological activity goes up, soil structure improves, function and stability of pores is better, and of course, more money in your pocket, and we all need that. But remember, what, what the quote from Michael Horsch, because years ago they were aiming for direct drilling, everything. And you see what he said, we got our costs so low we didn't even have to combine it. So be careful, if you go in direct drilling, make sure your soils are right and your conditions are right and you know exactly what, you, what you're up to, because there's, there's, there's more to it. Because we'd all be doing direct drilling if it was that simple, wouldn't we? You get to drill out and drag it across the field, no problem. But you're not all doing it, because it's very difficult. But if you've got all, the, all your ducks in a row and everything right, it can be done. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>